Hey everybody, Norm here at the All Guitar Network and got in some stuff. Just wanted to show you some unusual and some just cool stuff. This is a 1957 Stratocaster. And so what's cool about this, this is a fully original guitar. This still has some Bakelite parts. Um, you know, they usually ended in 56. This is a alder body, but it's a two-tone sunburst. Maple neck, single ply pick guard. Guitar has some good honest wear, but it's just a really great playing and sounding guitar. Um, see the wood on the back? It almost looks like ash, but I believe it's alder. And um, just normal wear of a guitar that's from 1957. But when you think about a 57 Strat, the first thing you think about is this two-tone sunburst. There's no real red in the burst. In 58, they introduced the red. And the earlier ones uh, were ash bodies and had a round string retainer. This is when they were first started using this type of string tree up here. So it's a pretty cool guitar. And uh, any collector would like it because it is fully original, but it also sounds and plays great. This arm here, actually, I don't believe is original, or this tip. Uh, but. Uh, it's got the original tweed case with the red interior, the coilon case. And uh, earlier they had a center pocket with the red interior, but this is where the pocket's off to the side. It's a pretty cool guitar, just a great collectible and a great uh, playable user type piece that you could actually play because it's not so clean that you'd be afraid to use it, but it's got enough honest wear to um, just, I would call this a very good condition, 1957 Strat. This is a very, very unusual arch top. This is a 1934 L5, and this is a Carl Cress. And what's unusual about this, um, it's got the 16 inch body, which is typical for that era, gold tailpiece and uh, uh, ebony board, ebony bridge. But this, it's got the uh, picture frame inlays, they call it. But what's really unusual about this is it's got an elongated headstock, almost like the size of like a Super 400 headstock with its own separate inlay pattern here. Four of these were made for Carl Kress, who was a Gibson and Dorsey back in the day. And uh, it's got some really killer wood really beautiful flame on the back of the neck and the back of the body and this thicker stripe down the middle got the original tuners um, and here's a picture four of these were made for Carl Kress there's a picture of Carl with I don't know if it's this one or one of the other ones and there's a few pictures uh, there's actually a production whoop, This is a production schedule here from when they uh, made the guitar printout. Um, and um, here's another picture of Carl with one of the guitars. And inside on the label it says Cress, K-R-E-S-S. -S. And Carl was a um, Gibson and Dorsey back in the day and he did play um, with um, a number of other great players, including Eddie Lang, who was one of the greats. If you had to look, of, uh, look up who were the greatest uh, players of that day, um, it would be Eddie Lang, Carl Kress, and a few of the other guys, you know, George Smith. and uh, So, pretty cool. It's got the original case. Oh, and by the way, um, I got this one from my buddy Joe Bonamassa. And Joe uh, had this guitar, he, he got it in, and he knew that I liked these, and uh, there was another guitar that he had his eye on. It was a J200 that was owned by Dave Edmonds, uh, who was a great English rockabilly, kind of the godfather of rockabilly for Britain. And so Joe wrote me a little note on here that uh, it was his, and uh, so it's got a really cool vibe to it, and something very historical and very unusual. This guitar over here is extremely rare and extremely unusual. This is a Prairie State, which is a Larson Brothers guitar. 
Uh, the Larson brothers made guitars under a number of different names, Euphanon, Prairie State, Stahl, Maurer, um, you know, so, and, and a couple other names. And they made these guitars, uh, and they were all almost individual. What's really unusual about this, it looks like an arch top, but it's not. It's a flat top with F holes. It's got an ebony board, and uh, this is not the original bridge. There's been a couple of repairs. You've got beautiful mother of pearl around the outside. Big jumbo body, cool headstock inlay, really nice flame maple on the sides and back. Original tuners up there. So this is just a highly unusual guitar. Um, it fits into its own category. Again, a flat top with F holes. That's pretty cool. So uh, I hope you like that. This is uh, what we would call more of a player grade but a little better than that, this is a beautiful dot neck ES335 in kind of the, wall, uh, the watermelon color. Two PAFs, one labeled, one in, unlabeled. This is a 60, 61 maybe even, it's right at the cusp. And they did some that were, um, you know, that were labeled and some that were unlabeled at that particular time. This one has been refretted and it had Grovers at one time and it has the original tuners put back on. Beautiful color, good honest wear, just a really nice guitar. Now this is one of the nice, nicest, most beautiful 59 precision bass. Uh, this has gold anodized guard, uh, maple neck, uh, three-tone sunburst. Um, this is an alder body and very little wear on this thing. Just really beautiful condition. Um, back of the neck, front of the neck. This is a low mileage guitar right here. And uh, just one of my favorite models is the anodized pick guard 59 precision bass. Has its original tweed case over here. And uh, it's a nice shape. This has been in my warehouse for years. And now you can own it if you'll pay the price. <laughs> okay, here's another one. This next guitar is an early 70s Gibson Crest. And these were Brazilian Rosewood, very unusual guitar, two floating, almost like Johnny Smith type pickups, above the face, they're not built into the face. And um, beautiful Rosewood, sides and back, maple neck, original tuners, uh, just a very unusual model. They made very few of these from like the late 60s to the early 70s. I believe this one is maybe a 71 or 72, um, but just a really nice guitar. Hope you enjoyed it. Guitar Minute at the All Guitar Network. And my phone.